front of me, right here, we have the Continental Divide. So everything behind me, in terms of the water, flows down into rivers and out to the Pacific. Everything in front of me, that way, flows down uh, to the east, into the Mississippi, uh, out into the Gulf. So this is the Great Continental Divide. And uh, we're at 4,585 feet. It all looks very flat here, and it is fairly flat at this particular point. But just to put this into context, we are currently higher than the UK's highest mountain right now. But you wouldn't think so, it's all flat. So we're quite high up now, and uh, with a bit of luck, we start to go down the other side. So this is it, the Great Continental Divide. We're quite lucky, we seem to have a tailwind that's pushing us along today. We're riding on the I-10, so it's kind of like a, a bit like a freeway, but you are allowed to cycle on this. <clears throat> and uh, we're picking up a lot of debris, bits of metal from tires that have been shredded, and we're getting punctures. So we're bound to get a few more. But once we get today uh, under our belt, We'll be in Texas tomorrow, so we're making relatively good progress. All right, guys, let's keep going. Yeah, punch of four for the day. These little pieces of wire. Yeah, so that's, that was... Uh, we just had to stop again, guys. I've got two flats, can you believe it? Not only the front, but the rear as well. Now I'll show you, these are the things that are causing a problem. They're basically tiny bits of wire that I think when a truck tire is shredded, you, you can't see them. Like the, 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 the shoulder is super smooth, it's lovely cycling, but we keep getting these flat tires with these little bits of um, wire. So there's a service road that runs along this I-10 now, so we're gonna take that and hopefully that should be a bit better. trying to stay on a frontage road uh, to avoid being on the I-10 but we've kind of got no choice we can't go any further so we're gonna have to cross the I-10 we can do it very carefully there is enough of a gap we're gonna ride on the I-10 for a little bit longer and then looking on Google Maps on the satellite images we can tell there's another frontage road over here and the journey will carry on and we'll be okay but hopefully we don't start getting punches again as soon as we get on to the I-10 so let's get across this road as quickly and as safely as we can. <laughs> right, I've stolen James's camera. <laughs> he's doing some work for a change. Yeah. But <laughs> well, he's not anymore. He's passed it over to Peter. But it is Peter's puncture. If we do go down the freeway we're doing maybe 23 miles an hour so we're getting quite a good average okay you can't really see it that well on the camera but las cruces is that way guys down there and that's our day finished uh, we'll be on about 125 miles for today but with all the punches we've had that it feels like we've done 200 and it's now quarter past seven so it's not too late and so we're going to finish off your longest day, Peter. How do you feel? Your longest day ever on a bike. Good, actually. Good. I feel worse than this. But Excellent. Legs are okay. <clears throat> yeah, Two, over 200 kilometers. So fantastic. Super, super. All right, so we have wrapped up the day, providing we can get in here, hotel behind. If not, there's three or four other ones. I deliberately came here because I saw on the map there was a whole group of hotels. So. Probability says we can get into one of them. Uh, I think we had seven punches today. Was that is that right? Seven. Eight. We had well, eight had four. punches. I had four. Four, three, and one. Four, three, and one. Crikey! Uh, it was just a bit unlucky. 
but uh, I had one pushing my bike. <laughs> yeah, Peter got a puncher while pushing his bike. All right, so we're going to get in and uh, keep this machine going, and we have editing to do and a few other things to do. All right. <laughs> 